Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Pioneer Prep. And this prep is going to be about these guys. You're unfortunately holy wool socks. We all hate to see a sock go down, especially because they rarely go down in pairs. But just because they get a hole in them doesn't mean that's the end of their usefulness for you, especially in a survival situation. So why don't I show you how to turn your holy socks into something useful. Everything that you're going to need to breathe new life into your unfortunate holy sock is right here in front of you. Uh, tape measure if you want to be exact and precise, some scissors, some thread, color of your choice, a sewing kit. Uh, if you want to know how I made this one, check out the link. It's going to be popping up for a different Pioneer prep. But in that sewing kit was a nice blunted needle and that is going to be the needle that I'm going to be using because it's a little bit easier when dealing with your sock. And this holy sock is from Fox River and it's the rag sock. And so that's going to be a wool sock. So now let's make our first cut. And what we are making in this particular Pioneer Prep is going to be a glove or a wrist warmer of sorts. And how you're going to want to do that is that you're going to use this section of the sock. Because typically your holes are going to be, you know, down at the toes or in the heel. And usually this is unworn. As you can see here, two different patterns of knitting. So we're going to cut below this pattern first to kind of just get it just right. And there you have it. Don't throw this part away. We're just going to stick it off to the side for right now. So now you have this sleeve. If you'd like, you can stop right here and just have it like that. Warm up your wrist. You could probably put it around your ankle. Uh, you could tie it off as well. A lot of different ways. But you want to go that extra little mile, why not put a thumb hole so it doesn't keep on going up and down. Where you want to do that though is where, take this off momentarily, is going to determine on where you want this glove to end. So if you want it to be right over your knuckles, put your hand in here like I'm doing, and find that knuckle right where your thumb is. Now, if you look here, that's right about there, but basically, take your ruler out, and if you look, that's basically an inch, maybe an inch and a half from this edge. Now, you are going to put the thumb hole at the finished edge, not where you cut, the finish edge. And if you notice, this is not coming apart. This is not unraveling because this has been machine woven. So now let's mark our spot. I would like it to be just over my knuckles. Pop the knuckle in, mark that spot right there. It's about an inch. Take your scissors. Now every one of us has different size thumbs and hands. So I would suggest that you start with a small hole and then just slowly make it bigger until it's comfortable. So I'll try that and ah, for me that works out pretty nicely. If you notice this is not unraveling either, but right here and right here are going to be very stressed out points on this new little wrist mitt or glove. So let's secure that a little bit. And how you're going to do that? Take that needle of your choice. I'm using the blunted one. 
and take a good amount of thread. Snip that. I'm gonna find the middle. I know you can't see this on the camera because the wood's dark and so is the thread. But I'm doubling it up, threading my needle, and then I'm pulling it to the end. So what actually what you are doing at this point is you are quadrupling the thread. So you're gonna be putting a lot of thread into this and just over your finger, give it a twist and pull and you'll make a kind of an ugly thick knot. Now, because this is wool, you can't just stick the needle in here like I'm about to do and pull it through and expect that knot to hold, boop, right through. You can't do that. Instead, since you kind of want to hide this knot, we're going to put the needle in here right at the end. A little closer, a little closer, right about there, good. Pull it through, but not all the way through. And since I'm trying to hide this knot, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. And just poke it through your thumb hole like so. And you're going to want to thread your own needle through the bottom of where your knot is. And you, I would suggest you do two strands on each side. And then there, when you pull that down, let's get that knot in that hole so this looks pretty, you have that. And that will secure it. If you don't feel safe with that, do it again. Like so. Now that you've got a good base, we're going to go sideways and grab some of the material through like so. And do this a couple of times. Once you have it secured how you like it, put the needle through, take this excess, wrap it around a few times, and then pull the needle through like that. Do it again for good measure, and that will knot it off. And all you gotta do is put it once more inside to make it disappear. Get your thread away. See, I'm just gonna tuck this into what I have sewn, like so. Pull it through. And then I'm just gonna snip it. So now, when I put my thumb in here, as you can see, that has secured that. So even though it's not ripping on its own right now, this is just an added extra insurance to give some longevity to your mitt. And I will repeat the process down here, and I advise you do so as well. Get two ruined socks and you'll get two new gloves out of it. But now, let's talk about the bottom part. Bottom part, let's just clean up this edge so it's nice and flat and straight. Now here, let's say your sock doesn't have a hole like mine does, unfortunately, like that. If you wanted to, you could sew a thread through here or a, a cord, like some paracord, weave it through here, and you just keep on going all the way around, and you tie it off, and you can make a little drawstring, and now you have a little woolen pouch that you can keep little knickknacks in. You can also leave it just like this, or you can cut it like I did with this previous one and I've created a bit of a canteen koozie. Uh, obviously this will work with a cylinder canteen, excuse me, as well, but this now gives me a flat surface, but I'll show you, take that one off. I'll put this one on and there, you can see my hole right there, but you can see where it will be on the bottom as well. 
Now this might not be as stable, but the nice thing about this is that now you can hold on to this if it's pretty hot, whether you've got a hot liquid in there or not. You could also have this wrapped around your canteen cup. So you have a nice little hand warmer. Or in some of my previous episodes, I have used my water bottle, my canteen that is, specifically as a hot water bottle heater uh, for keeping my toes warm and my sleeping bag warm. But because this is metal, I have to be very careful that it doesn't burn the synthetic material of my top quilt or my sleeping pad. This now will be an insulation for that and help protect the top quilt and anything else that might melt from this metal from melting. These are just two things that you can do with your worn out socks. But like I said, in a survival bug out situation, you never want to race waste resources and I don't know about you but my hands get cold and that's usually in part because of my wrist getting cold and this solves the problem pretty nicely and that ladies and gentlemen is how you can turn your old ruined socks into something more useful for your day-to-day -day life or especially a bug out survival situation where you never want to waste resources so if you enjoy this pioneer prep please do subscribe because there's going to be more Pioneer preps, bots, reviews, and Bug Out Boy episodes along the way. And if you have any questions or comments on how to do these, or if you have your own suggestions, please leave those down in the comment section below because I'd love to read them and you'll know I'll get back to you. So till then, take care.